It is you're eventually gonna graph it, so that's why I gave you graph paper, but you can do your work on notebook paper if you prefer that. So even though we're not using this little sheet to kind of help us, we can still set up the problem like we did yesterday. So I went ahead and wrote down the original form of the graph, and I'm gonna go ahead and write my factored form over here. So how do I factor the top? X, what would the top be if you factor it? X minus two, X plus one. So X minus two, X plus one. And then how do we factor the bottom? Yeah, take out the GCF of negative two, and what would be left? X plus one. So based off the sheet that we used yesterday, they asked us to find the whole, the VA, the, VA, the, the HA, So even if you don't have the sheet that we used yesterday, you can still kind of find the stuff in the same order and write it on the same kind of area so that it's less confusing, that's fine. So, does this graph have a hole? Yes, so I've got these factors that cancel. So what is the X coordinate of the hole? I heard one and I heard negative one. Which one should it be? Negative one, opposite sign, so negative one. And then we will go ahead and write down the stuff that was left over. So these two factors canceled, but that means that left over I have x minus two on the top and negative two on the bottom. So how do I use this to find the y coordinate of the whole? Yeah, plug in that negative one. So on the top I'm gonna have negative one minus two. On the bottom, I have minus two. So, so negative three over negative two. And so what should we write down? Three halves. Yeah, those negatives are gonna cancel and you're gonna say that your Y coordinate is just three over two. Are we good on that part? How do we look for the vertical asymptote? Yeah, factors that are on the bottom. Do you see any factors left on the bottom that have an X with them? No. no. So this is a negative two, that's a factor left on the bottom, but it doesn't tell us anything about a vertical asymptote. All the X's on the bottom have canceled, so here we would say none. Yes, ma'am. So for the whole, when we're graphing it, since it's three over two, do you want us to turn it into a Decimal? Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. So it's easier to graph. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I don't understand the difference between zero and zero. Well, Say that again? I don't understand the difference between zero and zero because the vertical So down here, if you were to take the problem and look at what your excluded values were for the problem, you would say my excluded values are only, there's only one of them, and you would say it's x equals negative, x cannot equal negative one. That's what you would say for your excluded values. So is excluded value like a whole? Is that what it An excluded value can be a whole or a vertical asymptote. Okay. So if you looked at this, you'd say there's only one excluded value that I have. You'd say that that excluded value happens to be the whole, so there's nothing left over to be a vertical asymptote. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for you to have a vertical asymptote where you say x equals zero, there would have had to be an x with this negative two. No, so if, if we look at like a factor that would end up being, you'd have to be able to rewrite the problem like negative two times x plus zero times x plus one. Then this could give you an x, um, a vertical asymptote of just plain old x because that's like negative zero or whatever. 
But if the problem, so if the problem's written as negative 2x times x plus 1, then it's possible for us to rewrite the problem like this and then think of that as one of the factors. But if there's no x there, which is the problem that we're talking about right now, if there's no x there, then we can't think of it this way. And that's why the answer is none instead of saying zero, because there's no x there to be zero. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a sec. Let me finish the, since we're doing a video, let me finish the video and then. All right. So over here, we've got the vertical asymptote. How do we find the horizontal asymptote? So you're looking at the first one. So the x on the top has a 2 as the degree. The x on the bottom has a 1 as the degree. And so what does that tell us? There are none. And how does that tell us that there's none? Because it's on your the top, the top is bigger, so we're going to say none. And then we're going to say instead there must be a slant or an oblique. How about the y-intercept? It is 1. Yeah, so we're looking at the numbers that are on the end. So looking at all the numbers that don't have an x attached, and that's negative 2 divided by negative 2, which is 1. And then how do we find the x-intercept? Whatever's left on the factor. Yeah, whatever's left on the top, the only factor that's left on the top. So if our factor that's left is x minus 2, then what is our x-intercept? 2, 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph all this stuff that we just found. <laughs> so we don't have any asymptotes to draw. It was none and none. But we do have a y-intercept of 0, 1. We do have an x-intercept of 2, 0. And we have a hole where the x-coordinate of the hole is negative 1 and the y-coordinate of the whole is 3 over 2. And 3 over 2 might be kind of hard to graph. So what decimal is 3 over 2? 1.5. So the whole is at the point negative 1 for the x-coordinate and 1.5 for the y-coordinate. So I'm going to graph it. I'm just going to graph it so it looks like a circle that's not filled in. And at this point, we've done every part of the graph we can do by hand. So now we need to graph it on our calculator. Okay. Do you guys remember how to type in fractions on your calculator? Yeah. Yes, how do we do it? Alpha y equals. Alpha y equals. Okay, so at this point. Do you want us to type in the original one? So that's a good question. I would, I would say it's always good to type in the original and see what it looks like. And then one of the ways you can check to see if you um, factored correctly is to type in the factored version after that and see if the graphs look the same. Because we, um, we know the original graph is actually right. Because that was the original, so that graph must be right. And so as long as our factored looks like that, it means that our factored <laughs> equation was also correct. Well, why don't you tell me about holes? Um, do I have to put those in parentheses? Yeah, so your whole top is going to have to be in parentheses and the whole bottom. So here's what our graph looks like. It happens to be a very fancy straight line. Let me change my window so it's more like your guys' window. Okay, so this is what your graph should look like. Should look like. Straight line. Are you guys getting a straight line? Yeah. Okay. And it goes through the hole, yep. Yeah, and that's actually a good point. Your graph will always go, go through the hole. A hole is never going to be not on the curve because a hole is a point you can't equal. And this graph, this grid is full of points we can't equal. So it only makes sense that we're talking about a point that we can't equal that's on the line that's full of points we normally should be able to equal. 
So a hole should always show up on, on your curve or on your line. It should never be somewhere else. No. Straight line is kind of weird. Usually there's something else. Yeah. All right. Let's look at number two. So you guys are doing a good job of asking questions. Let's keep asking questions if we don't understand something. Okay. Because we want to make sure that we're good at these. So for the next one, we're going to say y equals x minus 3 over 4x squared minus 8x. Is that minus 12? Yeah, minus 12. Okay, so there's the second one. Go ahead and take a moment and see if you can factor it. So what did you guys get when you factored the top? And how about when you factored the bottom? So on the bottom, you should have had a GCF of 4 that you took out before you even got started. And then after that, it's just a normal diamond problem. So the things we're looking for, we got to find the hole. There's a vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, y-intercept, x-intercept. And you do not have to show your work like this. I'm just showing it like this because that reminds me of the other sheet, and a lot of you guys said that sheet was helpful. So is there a hole for this graph? Yes. Yes. So we got a factor that cancels here and here, and what is the x-coordinate of the hole? Three. So once we take out that factor that cancels, what's left over? There's a four and an x plus one on the bottom. What's left over on the top? There's a one left over on the top. Okay, go ahead and take a moment and see if you can find the y coordinate of the hole using these leftovers. So what did you guys get for your y intercept? Or your y, sorry, your y coordinate for the hole? One over 16. Did everyone get one over 16? So we should have one over, we got the four right here. And then we're plugging 3 in for this x right here, so 3 plus 1. So on the bottom, we have 4 times 4, which makes 16. It's 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay. So there's the hole. Go ahead and take a moment. So we're looking at the bottom. Take a moment and see if you can figure out if there is a vertical asymptote. And if there is, what should it be? So don't say it out loud. Just see if you can find it. Did anyone get a vertical asymptote? Yes. What did we get? X equals negative one. So should we should we say X equals zero because I got a four right here? No. Why not? Because there there's no X with it. So a factor can only tell you an answer if there's an X that goes with that factor. And this factor of 4 does not have an x with it, so it's not another answer. That was a good question. Okay, so vertical asymptote is just negative 1. Go ahead and take a moment, see if you can find your horizontal asymptote. You might need to look at your notes to remember the rule for those. So see if you can find it, if there is one. So what do we have for horizontal asymptote? Y equals 0. Why do we have y equals 0? Yeah, and it, but it doesn't have to do with the 4. It has to do with the exponent. So we have an exponent of 2 on the bottom and an exponent of 1 on the top, and 2 is bigger than 1. So your reasoning was right, but we're looking at the exponents, not the number in the front. So exponent on the bottom is bigger than the top. That's why it's y equals 0. All right, go ahead and find your y-intercept and your x-intercept. Don't say them out loud. Just see if you can find them. So what did you guys get for the y-intercept? 
So we're looking at the negative 3 on the top and the negative 12 on the bottom. And if you do negative 3 divided by 12, you do get 1 fourth, so that's good. And the x-intercepts come from factors that are left over on the top. Do we have any factors left over on the top? No. So what is our answer for x-intercepts? None. If there's no x-intercepts, don't tell me zero. Zero is an actual answer. So if you don't see any factors left over on the top, that's why the answer is none. Yes, ma'am? Yep, but that's, but that's not an x. So your answers for vertical asymptotes, holes, and x-intercepts come from seeing an x somewhere on the top and bottom. So you're right, we do have a 1 left over there, but it doesn't have an x with it, and that's why there's no answer. Yep. All right, any other questions? Okay, so let's go ahead and graph what we have. We have a hole at 3, and then 1 16th is basically a fraction that's just kind of close to 0. It's just a very small fraction. So I'm just going to go just above the line, put the hole right there. We've got a vertical asymptote at negative 1. We have a horizontal asymptote at 0. We have a y-intercept at 1 fourth. Now, I think this is enough information for us to draw at least part of the graph because we know how asymptotes work. We know that curves just get really close to their asymptotes. So I know that from here, the curve is going to just get closer and closer and closer to that asymptote right there. And I know that my curve is going to go through the hole down here and then just get closer and closer and closer to that asymptote. And then for me to be able to do the rest of the graph, I'm just going to have to do this on my calculator. The like opposite like corner one, thing. Yeah. It it works sometimes, but it is possible that these could be like up here and up here. And it's not clear if we're talking about a graph that's one over x or one over x squared since this graph is just so different from that. Yeah. So this one on your calculator may not, because the, um, because the graph, are you guys listening? You can't really see as it's getting closer to zero right here very easily. Are you ladies listening over there? Laura, Quincy? All right, so if you can see, this is the part we just drew, is this part right here. And so the other part is down here in this corner. And for me to be able to see some x values and graph some points accurately, it might be helpful for me to look at what's happening um, to the left of negative 1. So I'm just going to look at my table and look at numbers that are to the left of negative 1. So at negative 2, I have negative 1 fourth. So here's negative 1, negative 2, and then 1 eighth. And so it looks like it's doing the same thing. where we know it's just getting closer to the asymptotes like each way. Yeah. Okay, so this one's not like a simple question, but are we just doing like parent graphs or Say it again. Are we still doing parent graphs? Like are we doing like it's these aren't parent graphs anymore. We don't have one over x and one over x squared. Um, because these graphs are just a lot more complicated. So these graphs are not considered to have parent graphs. So just, why it, look like it just it looks like one just because some of these these graphs are rational graphs, we still have something on the top and something on the bottom, so it still is going to look similar, but it's a little bit different. Because the graphs we talked about with parent graphs, they did not have holes. We did not talk about that before. Yeah. All right. So go ahead. At this point, we are just working on the other ones, and we're going to see how many we get. And then at the end of the period, I'll tell you how many you need to have done. All right. Because there's 12 total, you might not have to do all 12. I will let you guys know how many you need to do, okay?